So now eBay's actually came after my family. You know, by the time I graduated high school, you know, I already bought and sold probably 20, 30 cars. I wouldn't even know enough to have a car in my name yet. I mean, I could write my mom's name better than she could on a bill of sale. My mom bought and sold cars she never even saw before. So naturally, when I was of age of buying cars, I started going to auctions and buying cars, um, charity auctions, anywhere it let me in and had an auction, I wanted to be there. And you learn a lot of things. You know, I was totally green, you know, and you see these cars. And like, I remember really early on, I bought a car in an auction one time and it was a Thunderbird. It was like a 95 Thunderbird. It was really cheap, you know, and it's V8 Thunderbird. And I could buy it for $400. Heck, this is a thousand dollar car. Yeah, the whole right side was cleaned off of it. I never walked around it. I learned a valuable lesson that day. Little things like that. I also bought some cars, you know, some unexpected surprises in them. I actually bought a van that was a repossession that was full of cable boxes. And I actually sold the cable boxes for more than I sold the van for. Matter of fact, the only way I profited on the van was from the cable boxes. Thank you, DirecTV. And I got to play on eBay a lot. And eBay was a lot of fun. And this is right when eBay Motors started. You know, there was a double handful of people selling cars on eBay, 2000, they thought internet was just for porn, you know? So, I mean, you're, like, you're gonna sell a car, nobody's gonna look at it and drive it and touch it. They're gonna buy it right there and then come pick it up. Yeah, I started buying and selling a lot of cars, used cars. And you know, it's the thing that's crazy is cars that don't sell so good in your town may be really hot somewhere else. And they're looking for that car. But well, you gotta think about it. At a car lot, you've got one location, one spot, and unless somebody drives by and sees it, that's the only time it's gonna get seen. And a rainy day is a wasted day on a car lot. Well, that's retail sunshine. That's eBay's prime time. I mean, people are looking because it's nasty outside, so what are they doing? They're playing online. So I started getting smart about it, and I had several friends that had car lots. So I went to their car lot, and I would talk to them. I said, tell you what, I want the three cars you've had the longest, and I'm gonna sell them for you at a profit, and you're gonna pay me a percentage off of, and I'm gonna sell them in seven days. The very first car lot I went to, and uh, it's no longer there anymore, he actually retired. He had a car on his lot for seven months. I mean, this thing was fixing to have a birthday on a car lot, that's bad. And I sold it on a five-day auction for more than he was asking for. The very first words out of his mouth, is this, is this legal? Yes, it's legal. And he was sold. Every week he had three more cars for me to sell. Three more, three more. And then it almost got to the point, he was just buying cars that I was looking for. Friend tells another friend, tell, friend tells another friend. I had about 40 car lots within a year that I was selling cars for online. I'm, I'm a 20 year old kid, you know, and I'm walking around with my $600 Sony Cybershot camera and writing down all the details and my detailed pictures and typing everything out and throw a funny pun in there every once in a while. And next thing you know, you know, it really started taking off and I was selling, you know, anywhere between 30, 60 cars a month. I've sold heavy equipment, forklifts. I've sold traffic light changing trucks, boom trucks, semi trucks, tractor trailers, the trailers and the trucks, trucks and trailers together, car haulers. There was a drag car called the Quarter Horse. It was built in the 60s. It was a Henry J, a 1951 Henry J. A Henry J was a mail order catalog car through Sears and Roebuck. You ordered it out of a book. And the thing that was cool is somebody ordered this car and it was used on a military base for years as a little runaround. Well, finally, it just bit the dust. These guys on the base built a drag car out of it and they called it the Quarter Horse. Well, this, like I said, was in the mid to late 60s and everything that was used on that car was from the military base. All the uh, seat belts and the seats were covered in parachute material. And the seat belts were the seat belts of a fighter jet. And it was painted with airplane paint. I mean, it was hand lettered by a guy that was in the military. I mean, everything was done. And this thing toured around the nation to Air Force bases everywhere. And the car got a lot of notoriety. It was in Hot Rod Magazine and things like that. Well, a friend of mine felt this car in a barn behind a tire store and he bought it for next to nothing. And all this awesome information on this car had a, you know, Oldsmobile J2 engine in it, had one seat in the center. I mean, it was crazy looking, you know, this early drag car. I mean, it was a death trap from way back, but the car ran, they got it running. He's like, how can I sell it? He said, I've had it for six months. You know, I tied up a lot of money in this car. It's not taking off like I thought it would. Everybody loves to look at it, but nobody wants to own it. Seven days later, I sold it to a museum in California for three times the number he was asking for. So needless to say, he was a fan of Robin. 
eBay at the same time. You got to think about it. You know, in 2000, you know, there was probably 2,500 cars sold on eBay. In 2005, there was 5 million cars sold on eBay. And I'll never forget, I was an eBay power seller. And I was, I mean, that was awesome. You know, you get my little plaque and my eBay golf shirt. And, you know, I was proud of that. I mean, you know, that was right up there with old high school diploma, eBay power seller, you know, and yeah, showing it to my mom, you know, my little home office. And well, they actually sent me an invitation to eBay University. And it was a big conference they were having. They explained the bidding process and how eBay got started and, and all of this fun stuff, you know, about eBay. And it was interesting, but the majority of it I knew. It was kind of a yawn fest the whole time. But it was cool, you know, it was neat to kind of be a part of it, whatnot. And I'll never forget, they were explaining the proxy bid system that eBay uses to this day. Well, if you tell me something that intrigues me, I'm gonna research the hell out of it. You know, a few years before this, a lot of friends of mine were getting big into poker. Texas Hold'em. I've never played cards in my life. But I was intrigued by it. I want to know more. I want to know how it works. The inners, the ins, the back, ins, the outs, all the way around it. So I read a book by Doyle Bronson called Super System. It's 605 pages, 10 less than the Bible, on one card game. And that's how I play poker. Just like Doyle Bronson and just like the book. And I'm that guy. I'm going to research it. You know, so I came out of the box the third time I touched cards. They're like, man, Rob, you must be lucky. I guess so. So this proxy bidding, it intrigued me, you know, and like, I mean, I've seen it work and I knew how it worked, but they broke it down into a lot of detail, too much detail for them. And this is before PayPal and all that stuff. So I opened up an eBay account, email address, a name, and an address. So I started thinking about it. I'm like, hmm. And my dog at the time, you know, he's three pound chihuahua sitting beside me. So I started sprocketing an eBay account and it worked. And we bought things on there, just, just random stuff. Well, I put them at my neighbor's house as the address. So I started looking at houses for sale online. I'd use addresses and I started me probably 20 or 30 faux eBay accounts. My biggest reason I wanted the eBay accounts was for feedback. Somebody buy a car and they have a hard time with it. It's a used car. They're problematic. People don't trade in perfectly good cars, as a rule, you know? And uh, they leave you a negative feedback. Well, that, that kills your score. The one flaw in the eBay feedback system, a 99 cent item and a $200,000 car carry the same weight and feedback. So what do you do? You start buying little cheap stuff, downloads that you would never doubt just to get those feedbacks to get your numbers back up. And then I started figuring it out on the bidding end of it. You know, you got somebody bidding and you know there's more money on the table there. You know, you're in an auction that you started a car off at a dollar on. And that's what I always did. No reserve and one dollar auctions on these cars. And you know, what I would do is jump in there. I'd bump that bid up if I needed to. And sometimes you got bitten. I was a high bidder on my own car. Sometimes I made them pay what they were really wanting to pay for it to begin with. Go on eBay right now and find me an address. You want to mail them a letter or find a phone number for eBay. They ain't got one. I know eBay's address. It's 1025 Hamilton Avenue, San Jose, California. Because they, you know, they didn't send me a message, not an email. They sent me a certified letter. It was 17 pages long and killed every eBay account I had overnight. And they didn't like my bidding practices. And what's so funny, it was the month before that I was a power seller again. So the month of September 2005, I was an eBay power seller. The next month, I was permanently banned from eBay. That was 12 years ago. All right. Probably about six months ago, it was a joke. I said, you open up an eBay account, you know? New email address, new everything, you know? New, I don't even live in the same house anymore. New everything, you know? Put my credit card in from a PayPal. Gotcha, I'm in. Next day, it's killed again. My father's actually gotten warnings on his eBay. They were asking if it was someone else and not him. So now eBay's actually came after my family, which is hilarious about this. The big constant running joke with all my friends was, you're the original eBay outlaw. You're the only person, I mean, of all the people I've ever talked, I've never heard somebody being permanently banned from eBay. It's so funny, like, you know, I guess you gotta get your eBay and your mama name, I guess, you know, but that pretty much ended my career in selling cars on eBay. So I had to move on to funner and brighter things.